I kind of feel like this is less of a crossover and more of a roast. No, a roast is good natured. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Family Guy roasted TV shows. We can't compete with the big boys. Disney's already laying ground for a new Family Guy world. I was the It Boy in 2006. For this list, we'll be looking at scenes, cutaways, and full episodes with a long-running animated adult sitcom took aim at other shows. Which Family Guy parody did you think was the funniest? Be sure to let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Don't Try This at Home – Jackass after Peter and his pals watch an episode of Jackass, they get the idea to try some of the stunts themselves despite the show's warning not to. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are hilarious. They do so much funny stuff. The shenanigans that follow are as much a roast of the Quahog Gang's IQ as they are of Jackass itself. They start with Peter rolling off the roof in a shopping cart and seriously messing up his spine. A knock on how pointless and dangerous some of the Jackass stunts are. The real jackass faced harsh criticism after kids and adolescents seriously injured themselves trying the stunts on their own. So it's not a stretch to believe that Peter and his friends would do the same thing. Believe it or not, it's just... <laughs> Number 9. Harsh Punishment – The Brady Bunch The very first scene of the Family Guy pilot opens with the Griffin family watching The Brady Bunch. When Jan rats out Greg for smoking, Greg denies it, and Mr. Brady immediately assumes he's lying. Well, he's lying, there's no doubt about that. Greg, I'm afraid your punishment will be four hours in the snake pit. Maybe that'll give you some time to think about what you've done. This leads to some pretty harsh punishments for both Greg and Jan. In the real Brady Bunch episode, Mrs. Brady actually believed Greg when he denied that the cigarettes in his jacket belonged to him. And it turned out she was right. All right, Greg. If you say so. Of course, the Brady Bunch could be so sickeningly wholesome that Family Guy can't help but poke fun at it occasionally. Oliver, did you break this vase? No, the floor did. <laughs> oh, you're so cute. Hey, everybody, I. Bobby, you get back in the garage. Ow! Ah! Ah! Ow! Number eight Modern Family Guy. Modern Family and Various. Determined to win an Emmy, the Griffins decide to do their own take on an awards-worthy comedy, and the result is a mishmash of characters and storylines. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, not funny. Peter, who starts out in the role of Jay from Modern Family, quickly comes out as transgender like Mora in Transparent. Lois, I'll still be a parent to our children, but now I'll be a transparent. Get it? Transparent? Clever pun, right? Along the way, they take aim at some not-so-flattering representations of people of color in these critically acclaimed shows. Boy, the, uh, the ethnic characters on these Emmy-winning shows aren't exactly rocket scientists, are they? I don't know what you're talking about, Liz Lemon! Even the minor Family Guy characters like Trisha Takanawa are able to get in on the jokes. Daddies, I'm standing here delivering my line with more emotion and less of a monotone than the actual Lily on Modern Family. In reality, Family Guy has won a bunch of Emmys, going all the way back to 2000, but we still love their takes on these award-winning shows. Number 7. George Jetson Puts His Foot Down – The Jetsons Viewers of a certain age will remember the classic Jetsons opener, where George Jetson sends each of his family members off for the day from the comfort of their flying car. Meet George Jetson! When it's time for his wife Jane to depart, George takes a single bill for her from his wallet, but Jane surprises him by snatching the entire wallet instead. But when Family Guy recreates the scene while Peter and Brian are watching TV, Jane doesn't get away with it. Hey, 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 no, 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 I took this one out for you. You take this one, I keep this. You are not taking my whole wallet so you can go shopping. Like other sitcoms of its era, The Jetsons was squeaky clean and uncontroversial. The family lived in a virtual utopia, where marital spats and family problems were never really serious. That means Family Guy can't resist making fun of it. 
Oh, my God, George. Did you not hear me out there? Dad, are you all Go to your room, Elroy. But what happened? Go to your room! Number six. You Know Nothing, John Yellow Snow, Game of Thrones. What do you get when you cross Family Guy with Game of Thrones? Let's start with Game of Thrones, which aired eight seasons and was beloved by America for six and a half seasons. How about a parody that might make more sense than the actual final season of GOT? With the Griffins and their friends playing Westeros' most iconic characters, the episode roasts everything that critics and fans took issue with in the beloved fantasy series. Well, this one just says, girl, you trippin'. That's so Raven. <laughs> From the poorly lit set pieces to the anticlimactic final battle against the White Walkers, and even the disposable coffee cup that was accidentally left on set, nothing gets a pass. Maybe we should let Seth MacFarlane finish A Song of Ice and Fire, too. The battle's tonight, right? I wasn't being pranked. Number five. A roast is good-natured. Bob's Burgers. Almost every episode of Family Guy ends with the classic sitcom trope of the family sitting together in the living room, thankful that things are back to normal. Well, I'm glad everything's back to normal. I'll say. In an episode where Peter is mistaken for a trans woman, the closing scene has an unexpected twist. Peter reveals that it was actually a crossover with Bob's Burgers the whole time. Thanks for coming, cast of Bob's Burgers. We didn't get to do anything. When the Belcher family appears, Peter seizes the opportunity to take some shots at the show, implying that it didn't deserve its Emmys and mocking some of its standard jokes. Give us two Emmys worth of amazing. Maybe a funny burger name? No? Girl in the bunny ears? Since Family Guy actually has more Emmy wins than Bob's Burgers, we wonder if someday the Belchers will turn the tables and invite the Griffins for some crossover payback. Number 4. French-Canadian Weirdo – Caillou Caillou might be the most pure and innocent television show there is, so of course, Family Guy had to parody it. When Stewie lets a curse word fly at church, Lois first blames TV for teaching him foul language. Brian, shut off the television. It's ruined my baby. What are you talking about? When she learns that Caillou is the only program he watches, she sets out to watch the whole series. Unfortunately, it turns out to be really dull, and Lois falls asleep almost immediately. Why am I bald? I'm not a baby. I'm four. Are kids just bald in Canada? So Caillou decided to look himself up on Wikipedia. The episode makes fun of nearly everything about the educational children's series, from Caillou's baldness to the narrator's voice, but it saves its harshest jokes for Caillou's father. Caillou's low-testosterone father again indulged Caillou's tantrum, clearly trying to raise a sociopath. In a cutaway gag later in the episode, Peter takes yet another shot at Caillou's dad, comparing him to a certain cable news host. Oh, I've been hanging out with Caillou's beta dad. In fact, I'm meeting him at the park to eat unsalted saltines on the swings. I feel like you're wearing what Rachel Maddow would wear to a pumpkin patch. Number 3. Homicide, Life on Sesame Street, Sesame Street, and Homicide, Life on the Street. Family Guy has made fun of Sesame Street more times than we can count. What are these? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I, 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 I don't know how they got there. Of course they have. It's a classic educational kids show that's been on the air for more than 50 years, so they kind of have no choice. All the way back in Episode 4 of Season 1, Peter sits down to watch a crossover between Sesame Street and the gritty cop drama Homicide Life on the Street. You know, I don't know even why I asked. I'm gonna take out my gun, I'm gonna shoot this damn car! I'm gonna start on that Cadillac in front, this one in the rear here too. In the clip, Bert and Ernie stand in for a hardened alcoholic detective and his long-suffering partner. Beloved Sesame Street characters drinking and cursing instead of singing about rubber duckies? Bert, I wish you wouldn't drink so much, Bert. Well, Ernie, I wish you wouldn't eat cookies in the damn bed! Bert, you're shouting again, Bert. That told us everything we need to know about the kind of humor we'd be getting from Family Guy for years to come. Number 2. The Crossover Episode – The Simpsons the similarities between Family Guy and The Simpsons are impossible to miss. 
to the point that some have accused Seth MacFarlane of taking more than just inspiration from the older show. We act like we didn't take a lot from The Simpsons. We took a lot from The Simpsons. In reality, MacFarlane and Simpsons creator Matt Groening are friends. And after taking turns parodying each other for more than a decade, the two shows finally collaborated on a crossover in Family Guy Season 13. Huh. Guess we're in a town called Springfield. Springfield, eh? What state? I can't imagine we're allowed to say. When the Griffins' vehicle gets stolen, stranding them close to Springfield, they meet the Simpson family, and hijinks ensue. To be fair, Family Guy spends as much time making fun of itself in this episode as it does The Simpsons. In the end, the episode might be closer to a love letter than a roast. Smithers, who is that young go-getter? That's a character from another show, sir. Simpson, you say? Pretty much, sir. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Cut to Black, The Sopranos. The crime drama series finale was iconic, which means Family Guy had to make fun of it. What's the most acclaimed drama of all time? The Sopranos. Right, and what's the most memorable moment in the history of that show? Well, I'd have to say... Are these jokes? How I Met Your Mother. King Stuart III deletes the sitcom from his TiVo. That's not against the bro code. Yes, it is. Article 15B. That's the heart of the bro code, man. Well, you're right. I guess I did break the bro code. Hey, oh, 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 oh. What is this? Are these jokes? Peter breaks bad. Breaking bad. Time jumps and dark plot twists make for a great parody. Now take off all your clothes so we don't get blood on them when we kill that cop in the desert. Oh, the beginning all makes sense now. Doctor Who farted. Doctor Who. Don't go in the TARDIS. Doctor, the alien attack has begun. We've got to return to the 21st century. Uh, we can't go into the time machine right now. Kermy Jr. Muppet Babies. A pig and a frog were not meant to breed. Uh, Piggy, I don't think Kermy Jr. is doing so well. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Sun Also Writes Robot Chicken the stop-motion animated comedy Robot Chicken is the brainchild of Matt Senreich and Seth Green, aka Chris Griffin. Of course, this means that the rest of the Griffin family can't resist taking the occasional jab at it. How's it feel to be on a major network for 30 seconds? In a gag at the end of the Star Wars parody Blue Harvest, Peter makes fun of Robot Chicken's short runtime and its home on Cartoon Network while Chris defends the show. Didn't Robot Chicken already do this three months ago? Well, I wouldn't worry about it, Chris. I, I don't think people are even aware of that show's existence. The gag is repeated at the end of the sequel, Something 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 Dark Side, when Peter doubles down on his belief that no one actually watches Robot Chicken. I haven't seen that show in a while, and I don't know that anyone else has. Oh, I think plenty of people have. Their fans are pretty loyal to them. Oh yeah, all 42 of them? I'm not gonna let you get to me this time, Dad. In reality, Seth MacFarlane was one of the early champions of the show, so we know that this roast really is good-natured. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.